Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. What a joy it is to celebrate with you on this Easter morning together. My name is Vicar Kayla Hopgood. And on behalf of all of us here at Prince of Peace, Pastor Peter Folke, Victoria Chow on piano, Dr. Doug Helvering, our Minister of Music, welcome. Welcome to worship. I have a few announcements before you before we begin our time of joyful celebration together. The first is I wanted to direct you to uh, the three prayer stations that we have throughout the church in this Lenten and Easter season. The first is at our baptismal font, and it is prayers for peace for Ukraine. And then in our entryway, we have prayers for world hunger and prayers for the indigenous people as we continue to make reparations as a people. So feel free as you feel led to light a candle on your way out in your comings and goings this week. And lastly, please join us right after this service for some sweets um, and coffee in the community room right after this service. Let us rise for the Easter proclamation. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Glory and honor, dominion and power be to God forever and ever. Christ is risen. Alleluia.
the grace and peace of Jesus Christ, who was raised from the dead to bring everlasting hope, be with you all. And also with you. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ, and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. The first reading is from the 10th chapter of Acts. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread through Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives the forgiveness of sin through his name. Word of God, word of life. The second reading is from the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. But in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, 
when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, the women came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, Suddenly, two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you, while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. And please be seated. From that first lesson, the book of Acts, this morning, Peter, in his sermon to Jerusalem, says we are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put Jesus to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day. Friends, Grace, mercy, and peace from God, our Father, and our Lord, and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Last Sunday, 50 people gathered at St. Bartholomew's Lutheran Church in Trenton for a Palm Sunday procession of peace. We walked through the neighborhoods of the city to call for an end to gun violence, to pray for the victims and those left behind. Vicar Andy from St. Bart's carried the cross for the whole afternoon. Clergy vested. Many of us carried palms from Sunday morning worship. We bore witness to Jesus in the city. The procession took us to sites where the shootings actually took place. Our first stop was a bar on Chambers Street. There a young woman who was not scheduled to speak came out of the bar and started talking to us about her mother the victim who was shot at this site. She personalized what too often is just a crime statistic to most of us. Another stop was near St. Francis Hospital. There, a mother told us about her 15-year-old daughter 
hit by a stray bullet as she stepped out of her grandmother's house. People tell this mother that her daughter was just in the wrong place at the wrong time, but this mother asked, since when is grandma's house the wrong place? It was a draining afternoon. At the end, I was spent. I was cold, a little sore, but I was glad I came. And I was really grateful that five of us from Prince of Peace joined this Palm Sunday procession. But as we drove home, I was surprised when two of our walkers shared that they were advised not to come. They were told it was too dangerous. We were walking through bad neighborhoods and something could happen. The day before, I preached at a funeral of a dear friend at my former church, Redeemer Lutheran Church in Sakasana. At the repast, I sat across from a good friend of Mark's son. He was a member of a local church. We shared stories of the former pastor whom I knew. But then this friend continued with a story that is all too familiar in the church today. He said the church had been declining before the pandemic, but just like everything, everywhere, the decline only accelerated in the pandemic, when everything shut down. The church figured out how to do live streaming like we all did. But after they opened back up, only a scattering of the congregation returned. This friend said that he had been back to church a few times, but he's not going back. He said, worship is like a funeral. There is more life here today at Mark's funeral than there is for us on a regular Sunday morning. As the women came to the tomb early on Sunday morning, they were perplexed that Jesus wasn't there. Suddenly, two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them and ask the question, why do you seek the living among the dead? That is a question that the church asks this day as well. Why do you seek the living among the dead? Many churches are dying. And while there are many factors contributing to this, Often those churches in trouble are in trouble because they have made the decision to keep it safe. To keep Jesus to themselves. To keep the gospel within the walls of the church. I ask you today, what kind of a church do you want to be a part of? A church that is safe? or a church that processes through the streets of Trenton. Joy J. Moore is a professor at Luther Seminary in St. Paul, Minnesota, and a contributor to Working Preacher, a podcast that I listen to every week. And this week she spoke to the difference between defining resurrection and presenting resurrection. To define resurrection, you first have to understand it. You have to be able to explain it, maybe even try to prove it. But I'm sorry, <laughs> you're doomed to fail if you're going to try to explain what this day is about. 
On the same podcast, Matt Skinner added that the resurrection is a cosmic confrontation with death, a much larger reality than we can ever explain. And I think we hear that from St. Paul in the second lesson this morning. For Christ must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet, and the last enemy to be destroyed is death. Now tell me, how do you define that? Instead, the church is called to present the resurrection. And we present the resurrection by testifying to it, sharing our experience as people of faith. It's that simple. Look at the women in the story this morning. When they come to the empty tomb, they do not sit down and try to analyze what is happening. They're as perplexed as anyone. But what do they do? They simply take themselves, they run to the people they know and they love, and they say, Jesus is not in the tomb. That's all they say. We don't know where he is, but we know that he is not in the place of the dead. There is a fine line between faith and recklessness. When I invited Prince of Peace to the Palm Sunday procession last Sunday, I never thought I was asking anyone to cross that line. I never deemed the walk dangerous. I was more concerned that the walk was four and a half miles long. That's what I was afraid of. (laughs) Still, I found myself keeping track of our people like I was at a youth event. (laughs) Hyper aware of where the kids always are walking. But as I reflect back on the procession, on the comments about the danger and about witnessing to this day, I realized that the five of us, in fact all 50 of us, were presenting resurrection. I keep thinking of the people that we walked by. In Trenton, people are on the streets, people are on their doorsteps, they're on their front porches. And as we walked by, what were they thinking? Near St. Francis, one gentleman asked me, what are you guys all doing? And I said, it's a peace procession calling to an end to gun violence in the city. And the man said, thank you. Amen. I keep thinking of the daughter who mourns her mother and that mother who mourns her daughter. What were they thinking when the church walked by? A processional cross, clergy vested, people carrying palms. Yes, resurrection is a cosmic battle. Death remains the enemy. Their loved ones are not coming back because we decided to walk through their streets. But maybe for the first time, they saw the church noticing their grief. They saw the church listening to their story. They heard a church praying for their lives. The church showed up where they live. Maybe for the first time they felt like they were not just statistics in a police report. I pray that Palm Sunday, that Palm Sunday procession brought some relief, some comfort, some spark of life in the midst of death. And it never would have happened if the church was too afraid to walk into their neighborhood. 
On the front cover of your bulletin this morning is our new logo, logo here at Prince of Peace, Practicing Resurrection. It comes from a Wendell Berry poem. Gratitude and grace comes from uh, Dr. Doug. He's the one who coined that after, <laughs> after we started talking about this. I think it's really important to understand that practicing resurrection is not perfecting resurrection. If we could perfect resurrection, we would be able to define it. And you know what? We could do that from the safety of our homes and our church buildings. But practicing resurrection is presenting resurrection. It takes our experience our story, our people, our church, our faith, our God, and it takes it to the streets wherever they may be and presents resurrection to the world. Sometimes we make mistakes. In fact, quite a lot we make mistakes. Sometimes, I get it, we're afraid. And sometimes we're as perplexed as the greatest skeptic. And still, we practice resurrection. I do not want to be a pastor of a dying church. And I know that you do not want to come to a dying church. We don't want Sunday morning to be deader than a funeral liturgy. And we will not seek the living among the dead. And so, I am going to practice resurrection. And I call you to do the same. And together, we will be the church that Peter calls us to in the book of Acts. We will live by faith and not by fear. We will witness to this third day. We will take our faith to the streets and we will witness to a world where God shows up. Because Christ is risen, he's risen indeed, alleluia and amen.
let us joyfully proclaim the Easter Creed together. I believe in the Jesus who healed and the Jesus who was arrested. I believe in the Jesus who was abused and the Jesus who abused not in return. I believe in the Jesus who was called a traitor and the Jesus who was a peacemaker. I believe in the Jesus who was falsely accused and the Jesus who turned those accusations back on his accusers. I believe in the Jesus who was crucified and the Jesus who forgave his crucifiers as they watched the breath of life leave him. I believe that the Jesus who was buried on Friday is the Christ who arose on Sunday. And because we believe in it, we affirm Jesus to be the Christ Son of the living God, Savior, Liberator, long-awaited Messiah, King of kings and Lord of lords, I gladly proclaim the day of Christ's resurrection to be the Easter for all generations. Glory to God, our Savior, lives. Amen. Let us pray. Throughout the church and across the world, May the message of the living Christ penetrate beneath the level of familiarity and begin to awaken that which is lost and dying within the human spirit. Come, living Christ, come among us and make all things new. For brilliant thinkers, we pray, those whose thoughts divert them into doubts and enigmas that leave a genius confused while little children dance freely into your kingdom. Come, living Christ, come among, among us with a priceless gift of faith. faith. For confused minds, we pray, those who have been over-impressed with smart theories or bullied around by sharper intellects, and who this day live like puppets, come, living Christ, Come among us with truth that sets prisoners free. For perverted souls, we pray. Those who for the sake of varied lusts have told lies to themselves so often that they now believe their own crooked self-justifications. Come, living Christ, come among us with your light and make us see. For thirsty minds, we pray those who are awakening to questions previously ignored, or who are dissatisfied with the answers of religion's zealots and social dogmatists. Come, living Christ, come among us with waters that spring up with eternal life. For wounded souls and bodies, we pray. Those in hospitals and clinics, those who watch by their beds, and those who are grieving and waiting for funerals. Come, living Christ, come Come among among us with rest for the weary and peace for the distraught. For our own loved ones, we pray, some with faith and others on the fringe, those who are strong and others who are weak, some who are confident and others who are riddled with anxiety those close at hand, and those who are far away in body or spirit. Come, living Christ, come among us with that grace which shows its perfection in human weakness. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. And now may the peace of the risen Christ be with you always. Please share a sign of peace. Because it says that the adult choir is singing the Hallelujah Chorus. Today, the adult choir is the congregation. And I have scores. So, I know that you all know it. I know Dr. Franz is one. So, I have a few scores. Anybody want to sing the whole It's okay. Just enough to This is part of our recruitment for spring. Okay, okay, there's more back there. We got one coming to you, I think. 
Jesus Christ. Preach. Look at this. Okay, there you go. I got a lot. I made 30. Because I have faith. Okay. I think Pastor knows it, but I think he's doing it. Very good. Well, I have enough. There's one back there. Uh, Nancy's got a few. Okay. We're going to give it the old pop try. We did a holiday chorus. <laughs> and it is customary when we do this to stand, so I will invite you all to stand with me, and let's, let's do it. It's going to be fun.
Let us pray. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering and death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead and to an inheritance which is imperishable, everlasting, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread, and in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and life and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. 
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from our time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In these days of pandemic and, and still trying to figure out how to be church, especially with communion practice, we do invite you to come forward if you so choose for the sacrament this morning. If you would prefer to stay in your pew, there were little cups with bread and wine in the back. And if you would not want to come forward but still want communion, feel free to go back and pick up one of those what we call communion kits. Strange word, but <laughs> it works for us in these uh, strange times that we're living through. Otherwise, come forward and receive the bread and wine today. Come to the table prepared for you. Taste the overflowing grace of God. Amen.
body of Christ that's given for you? Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new, earth, new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. First of all, can I just say thank you for coming to church today? <laughs> this is, it's, it's bringing me to tears to just have people here add to uh, be who we are, are called to be. So thank you for coming to church on this Easter Sunday. And now let us receive the benediction. Do not be afraid. Jesus has risen. You have seen the empty place where he lay. Go and tell the world that Jesus is alive. Even now, he is going before you into your streets and your homes, your offices and your markets, your prisons and your hospitals. Look, and you will see him. In the name of God the Creator, God the Redeemer, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. right after this for coffee and treats provided by the Kong family and with this Alleluia Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. go in peace tell what God has done <laughs>